really very, very happy say, to uh, have we say, uh, Professor Hu is here. Uh, actually, say also we can call it President Hu, okay, from we say, uh, Beijing Li Gong Dashi, BIT, okay, BIT, okay. Uh, President Hu is the member of uh, Chinese Academy of Science, and also before say, the president is at the Bei Li Gong, he was the president uh, in Nanhang, Nanjing Hang Kong Hang Tian Dashi. Uh, he has he say, received he say, uh, so many, many he say, awards. I cannot he say, I'll just say, he say a recent one. Then the one he just received is the Heliang Heli Award. Okay, that's a very, very prestigious he say, award. Okay. Uh, let's say, say, welcome, he say, President Hu give our he say, a lecture. The lecture title is okay, the Finance and the Control of Rigid Flexible is a Multi Body System. Okay, oh, that's it's so loud. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Professor Zhang. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, it's my great pleasure to visit uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology again after a uh, long, long separation. And uh, my last visit was in 1999. And I believe most of you at that time were not here. And uh, what I'm going to talk uh, about today is yeah, the dynamics and the control. Well, let me look for the pointer, OK. Dynamics and control of uh, rigid and flexible multi-body systems. And if I ask uh, what are the flexible uh, rigid multi-body systems, different people will give you different answers or different examples. And uh, actually, I'm going to talk about the dynamics and control of deployable space structures. And I just got to know that the Department of Mechanical Engineering here will receive a new name of Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering here. So I believe this talk will maybe have very good coincidence with your new department name. And, uh, I'm in the Department of Mechanics School of Aerospace Engineering, and uh, so I will talk about the background of this presentation later, and then give you some description about uh, the theory and the numerical approach, then focus on the application to deployable space structures, which are very important in space industry. Okay, let me say some few words about background. And uh, perhaps some of you have known that the State Council of China issued the white paper on space activities in next five years last year. This paper describes that China will develop the space station and uh, the large Earth observing systems with a very high resolution and also some project of deep space exploration. These space projects will have very strong requirements for the deployable space structures of very, very uh, large scales, uh, couple of meters or even couple of hundred meters. For example, and uh, the telecommunication based on satellite will need very large antenna, deployable antenna, and the deep space exploration needs the very large solar sails to drive the aircraft with a very low energy. And uh, this is the example of deployment process of the antenna. And uh, at first stage, two robotic arms will stretch first, and then a centralized hoop truss will be deployed together with the antenna reflector made of very soft cables and mesh. And these structures gives us a lot of challenges from their features of very soft parts and uh, a lot of rigid flexible parts and a lot of joints with clearance or lubricants. Okay, later on we'll talk these features give us some problems from a viewpoint of dynamics and control. Because for these kind of large space structures, it's not possible for us to conduct any ground experiments 
to simulate the real space environment, such as the microgravity or periodical exchange of heating or vacuum, etc. So we have to do exact numerical simulation in the design stage. Now let me talk about uh, some challenges that features of those tr space structures gives us. The first challenge uh, comes from the very soft parts. Since the uh, during the deployment of the structure, the whole system will undergo both the large overall motion, including the rotation, together with the large deformation. The coupling of these kind of motions will give you a lot of tough problems from the viewpoint of nonlinear dynamics. The most useful tool to describe this kind of system is the so-called flexible multibody dynamics. However, some old versions of this approach do not work. For example, the traditional kinetoelastodynamics dynamic fails to work and the most popular approach called floating frame of reference approach also fails work in some cases because from the description of the configuration of the soft structure, you can find some shortcomings. Here, I'll give you an example. For example, if you look at the deformation and overall motion of a slender B, and a specific point P can be described by this formula and it includes two parts. The first part is R0. This is the overall motion of your floating frame of reference, x1 and x2. And the second part, elastic deformation, with respect to this floating frame of reference. And this way, you can use the concept of structure dynamics to express this elastic deformation through the use of the modal expansion. Then, by means of the Model reduction, you can get a lower ordered model for this system. So you can get the dimensional reduction by truncating the high elastic modes. This is an advantage. However, this kind of a truncation will give you some problems. The most dangerous thing is that the truncation of coupled overall motion and the large deformation will bring you some mistakes in numerical simulation. For example, Professor King found or pointed this problem in the middle of 1980s, and later on, Professor Hong in Shanghai Jiao Tong University explained why this coupling is so important that you cannot give it off in the beginning of this century. Very recently, people think that we do not need to use any floating frame of reference. We can use absolute coordinate. What about this approach? Actually, it works. However, it needs a lot of computation time and a lot of CPU. OK, the second challenge comes from the rigid flexible parts. And if we are talking about the absolute nodal coordinates I just mentioned, then we usually describe the configuration of flexible body into two parts also, and for example, uh, following the concept of finite element, we can describe the configuration of this soft matter through some nodal coordinates, such as point I, point J, and with the help of interpolation, we can describe both the over motion and also the deformation. However, the description of rigid body is totally different. If you know the, if you remember what you've learned in theoretical mechanics, you can remind that uh, the specific point P here uh, can be decomposed into two parts. The first part is the overall motion of the mass center of the rigid body. And the second part is the rotation of this point P around the mass center. This, these are two different kinds of descriptions of the motion and how to combine these two concepts together. That gives us some challenges. And furthermore, the most tough problem is the multiple time scales due to huge difference in stiffness because this is very soft and this is very rigid. The third challenge comes from numerous joints in those deployable structures. Without these joints, you can see that the structure cannot be deployed. However, these joints must have clearance. 
And uh, these clearance give us impacts and contacts. If the joint is not well lubricated, then you will have to solve the problems of stick slips due to the friction. If you put some lubricant into the joints, then you will have much better dynamic performance. However, the description of the joint with lubricant becomes much more complicated. Sometimes you need even to solve the interaction problem between the fluid dynamics and solid dynamics. Okay, the motivation of this research is to develop a unified approach to modeling, analyzing, and controlling both rigid and flexible parts which are composed into a whole system. The proposed approach should be able to deal with the dynamics and control problems involving very soft bodies, rigid bodies, and many joints with clearance and or without lubricants. Okay, now let me talk about a theory and approach, and I will talk about uh, how to describe the motion or configuration of flexible bodies, and then how to describe the motion of rigid bodies and joints, and then later on I will combine these two approaches to together to deal with the rigid flexible multi-body systems, and then give you some examples in application. Now let me look at the description of flexible body. We use the absolute coordinate to describe the configuration of a very soft body, such as a slender beam like this. A specific point on this beam can be described uh, this way, similar to the interpolation description in finite element method. However, there we did not include the overall motion into consideration. Here you can see that a0 and B0, just the overall motion of this point I. And then through the cubic interpolation, we can uh, find that the arbitrary configuration equals to S times Q, and S is the matrix of shape functions, and Q is the generalized coordinates. In this case, it has eight entries uh, uh, describe the position of the nodal uh, the nodals and the slope of the nodals. Uh, following this idea, we can further establish uh, more finite elements for, say, the beams, plates, etc. For, for example, we can describe the configuration for the slender beam and uh, Timoshenko short beam, etc. Uh, by the way, we've established well uh, good uh, uh, finite element. Finite, uh, uh, finite, uh, finite element for the curved beams in three-dimensional space, which can be used to describe the soft cables or meshes in our structures. And uh, furthermore, you can expand the idea to establish the finite element for plate, composite plate, curved shells, etc. And uh, what I have to uh, have to emphasize that the Description of the motion and configuration also the same. They always keep the form of R equals to S times Q. No matter what, ki what kind of find me method you use. And uh, we also establish the element for membranes with the wrinkles and slags, which are useful to describe the solar cells later on. Since we have the description of the configuration of a soft matter, then we can write down the kinetic energy, string energy, and elastic force, and the virtual work of external force. Then we put these three quantities into the Lagrange equation. You can establish the dynamic equation of the single element. What I have to emphasize is that here, the mass matrix uh, has a very good property. It's a constant matrix very easy to deal with. However, the elastic force becomes much more complicated than the usual case because it's a combination of both the overall motion and the large deformation. So later on, I will give some simplified computation scheme. To simplify the computation of nonlinear elastic force, we need to go back to the classical continuum theory and uh, let D be the elastic tensor, and E be green string, 
and Q is the pure luxury of stress of the second kind, then we have the constitutive law and the relation between the string and the uh, deformation gradient. And here, H is the constant, does not have any relation with the time. Then we write down the string energy, and then we can derive a simplified description of the elastic force. The most important contribution of this study is that we can remove all those quantities related to time out of the integration so that the computation of the elastic uh, force will be greatly reduced during your numerical simulation step by step in dynamic process. Furthermore, we need to establish the tangential stiffness matrix. Similarly, we can move all the quantities related to time out of the integration so that the computation time can be greatly reduced. The removal of the new, uh, numerous matrix multiplication by factorization, factorization this way will make the computation at least 10 times faster than the most efficient method of invariant matrix, which was pro proposed eight years ago. And uh, this is a very important work and then make the approach feasible to real application. To testify uh, the new description of the soft, uh, soft body uh, subject to both overall motion and large deformation, we offer some simple numerical examples. Here are some examples of the large deformation of clamped beam. And first, we, we can bend the clamped beam from the straight line to a half circle or to the full circle. And all these deformations get very good agreement with the numerical results obtained by Abacus or ANSYS. And then the second tough example I, I show you is the inflation of an airbag from the no pressure states to the stator with a pressure of 400 pascals. And as you know, uh, during the deformation of uh, memories, you will have three stators, either in taut stator under the tension, or in the wrinkle stator, or in the slack stator. And during the numeric simulation, we need to ident identify the exact stator in each time step and uh, then I show you an animation of the inflation. And uh, here, the red stator stands for the taut elements and blue, the wrinkle. And at the four corners of these air flags, uh, airbags, you can see some uh, point in the slack stator without any attention. And uh, of course, this is a very uh, simple numeric simulation. Later, I will give you some real applications. OK, uh, this is a description about the flexible body. Now let me talk about how to describe the rigid bodies and contacts. Since we are talking about uh, the description of motion in absolute coordinate, and uh, so we turn to the other description of the rigid body instead of the, say, rotation surrounding the mass center or not. And here we have a global coordinate or absolute coordinate. And uh, we do not care where the mass center is on this rigid body. We use two position vectors, i and j, together with the two unit vectors, which are not on the same line, such as the u and v. And he, so now we use four vectors in three dimensional space, and then these replies 12 quantities. However, the total independent degrees of freedom of this rigid body is only six. So you can imagine that we must put six extra constraints of the rigid body. And then you can have six independent degrees of freedom this way. And uh, it's very good feature here that we still have the description of r equals two, not s, but c times q quite similar to the case of the flexible body. Actually, this is just a degeneration from the concept of absolute coordinate formulation. Actually, if you have some simple case, for example, a rigid body like this, very slender beam, and you do not care about the rotation of the beam, then 
you only have five degrees of freedom. And then, in this case, you can use only two position vectors at i and j, two ends. And then you put one rigid constraint, that's a fixed distance between two points. Then you will have only five independent degrees of freedom to describe the motion. You do not care where the mass center is. OK, then we can write down the kinetic energy this way. And we also have the constant matrix of inertial properties. And we can write down the virtual work of the external force and the constraint, including, say, the contact between uh, the journals and the bearings, etc. Later on, I will talk it in detail. Then put these quantities into Laglange equation together with the constraint functions. Then it's easier for you to describe the overall motion of a rigid body together with the constraints. OK, let me talk something about uh, how to describe the motion of a joint. Here, I'll give you a good a simple example of the revolution joint or cylindrical joint without lubricant first. And uh, usually, uh, the journal and the bearing are in the position of uh, disalignment. And uh, so they have an angle between their axis. And then from this figure, you can easily to define the distance between the point P to P apostrophe. And then this quantity depends, describes you the distance, data P. If data P is zero, then the journal will contact with the bearing. So in the description of absolute coordinate, everything becomes very simple. As soon as you have the description about uh, the contact, then you can establish the relation uh, between the normal contact force and the contact distance, and also the tangential friction. And all, all those are the tr quite traditional things, and I do not need to present them in detail. And uh, here, I'll give you a simple example of a double pendulum with two cylindrical uh, joints. Uh, each of them will have uh, clearance. And uh, if these two arms are fully rigid, and then you will have this kind of dy dynamic response if you let the uh, double pendulum uh, falling down under the gravity. Well, if you use more flexible bars, for example, change the Young's modular to this quantity, you will have this dynamic response. And if you use even softer bars to use at the arms, then these curves will be in the same position, will be get a coincidence. Why? The flexible bars will absorb the dynamic response of high frequency. This is the kind of natural result from the viewpoint of mechanical vibration. OK. In most cases, we will put some lubricants in joint to let the dynamic performance even better. So we have two cases. If the cylindrical joint is very short. We can use a kind of simplified model. Uh, here, the pressure between the journals and the bearings can be expressed as a function. You do not need to solve any ODE or PDE. However, this is a very specified case. In most of the cases, we, can, we do not put any uh, assumptions on the length of the journal. And in this way, we need to solve the Reynolds equation of lubricant. And uh, this is not very difficult nowadays if you use the different schemes. And uh, you just put your solver of the uh, Reynolds equation together with your solver of solid finite element, finite, finite element methods. Then you just do some coupling of Fe model and the Reynolds equation, and then you can solve the problem. Here is an example of double pendulum with a lubricated joint. And here you can see that the dynamic response becomes much more smooth due to the function of the lubricant. 
And uh, what I've talked about here, the revolut, revolution, uh, revolute uh, joint uh, or spherical joint, uh, in the case of spherical joint, you can do quite similar work, and I do not talk it in detail. And in the real application of space industry, what we've often to have to deal with is the contact uh, during the manipulator grabs some object. And uh, this, uh, this is also kind of the dynamics of rigid bodies. And uh, you can define the point contact or line contact since it's easier for you to calculate the distance between your manipulator and the contact. So similarly, you can establish the constraint equations together with your dynamic equation. OK, now let me turn to the dynamics and control of rigid flexible multi-body system. We need to combine the theories of the first two parts together. And uh, now we will have a set of differential edge equation after assembly of finite elements and constraints like this way. And uh, the, this equation includes the dynamics of both flexible dynamic, flexible bodies or rigid bodies. And these two algebraic equations describe the system constraint or driving constraint. And here, what we need to solve is the generalized coordinate Q, which are unknown quantities, together with lambda, which is the Laglange multiply represents for the constraint force. Theoretically speaking, there are two ways to solve this kind of dynamic problems. We prefer to use uh, the right, uh, right way. We first discretize the dynamic e equation and do some pretreatment for the constraints, remove some redundant constant and locate all zero entries in the matrix. Then we use the so-called generalized alpha scheme to confer, to transform the uh, algebraic uh, differential equation into algebraic equation. Of course, this is a linear algebraic equation in each step of your time integration, but with a sparse matrix. And then we can use some parallel computation scheme to solve this large linear algebra equation and then do some post-treatment to testify whether the result is OK. If it's OK, yeah, just a go. Otherwise, then go back to your original equation of the system. And I'm, I'm not going to talk about these mathematics in detail, but I have to emphasize that here uh, yeah, the problem we need to solve, and after the discretization, we will solve uh, this kind of linear algebraic equation. And uh, to use the parallel computation, we need to do some numerical works. For example, we need to rearrange and uh, let the matrix become the one-dimensional arrays, and then we need to use the graph theory to locate. Then you can put these quantities into the parallel computational programs, and after the computation, you need to rearrange your non-zero elements through the use of graph theory and get the incremental delta lambda and delta q, and then go to the next time step, step by step. And here, I'll give you a simple example of the flexible, uh, multi-flexible dynamics. And, uh, this is also a double pendulum, but composed with more complicated components. Uh, it's a part of shells instead of beams. And we, put, we have, a, for example, a single cylindrical shell. We cut the shell into two parts, and then we trim the two edges to let it to have an angle, theta. And then we connect these two edges through a joint, and then we will have a double pendulum. And uh, at first, the pendulum are put on the hor horizontal plane, and then we let it going down under the gravity. Then it will have the swing together with some large deformation during the dynamic performance, dynamic, dynamic process, because this is a very flexible shells. So for this kind of dynamic simulation, in, it required a lot of time in the old days. And now it can be completed on a PC. And here we model the double pendulum through the thin shell elements of 36 degrees of freedom of plate element, shell element, 
based upon the description of absolute nodal coordinate formulation. And uh, we complete the Neomax simulation at a small workstation with 12 processors. And here are the computational time, CPU time, with respect to the number of elements. And uh, this is a very good result, only it takes less than 10 minutes. However, in the old days, it required at least one or two hours. So you can imagine that if the computational time is so long, and you cannot use this approach in application. OK, uh, some people will interest in the control of this deployable space structures. And uh, we did some very simple uh, control uh, work. And at first, we simplified the model to a multi, you know, rigid multi-body systems. And then we can use the inverse dynamic analysis to describe or to determine the ideal input of the feed-forward control. Of course, if you have the uh, flexible flexibility of the components taken into consideration, you need to make some revision or update. We use the update of feedback. Then we have the combined feed-forward com control and feedback control together. Then we can control the rigid, flexible, multi-body systems. And, uh, one important thing is that in the description of absolute rigid, absolute nodal coordinates, and we do not have any direct description about the rotation. We only have the nodal position and the slope of the nodal. So this way we cannot put the torques directly. So we need some indirect description about the torques and the rotation. And uh, recalling that, we use two position vectors plus two unit vectors to describe the motion of a rigid body, and uh, Ri, Ij, and U and V. If we can replace these two unit vectors, then we can describe the rotation and torques directly. So we introduce two new direct vectors, Rm and Rn, and Rm minus Ri equals to U, and Rn minus Rg equals to V. Then we use four position vectors to describe the motion of the rigid body. And then this way, we can put the corresponding force on this point, which are equivalent to the torques you are going to apply in application, in, in control practice. OK, here is an example of the dynamic process of a robot with six flexible arms and six joints with clearance. And uh, here is the dynamic, dynamic trajectory of the manipulator, uh, starting from the uh, satellite, then go to the object to take it off. And later on, we'll show you a more detailed dynamic performance through another example. And uh, these figures give you some brief idea about how the clearance will affect the dynamic performance. And uh, we have three curves in one figure. Say one clearance, three clearance, six clearance. So you can see that more clearances gives you more troubles in control, because here you have the tracking arrow. So more clearance, the larger tracking arrows. And of course, if you use some more flexible arms in your robotics, then you will have better performance. So for the space robot, the flexible arms have two important roles, plays two important roles. One is to reduce the weight of the robotic systems, and the second is to have the better dynamic performance to absorb the oscillation or vibration of high frequency induced by the impacts or stick slip in the clearance. Of course, if you put some lubricants, you will have much better performance. OK, now let me turn to the applications to deployable space structures. And uh, this is the most important part 
of this talk today. Uh, I, forgo I forgot to mention that actually this research is a problem oriented. The purpose of this visit is not to develop some new schemes, is to solve the real problems. I will show you four examples. The first is the deployment of a SAR antenna here. SAR is the abbreviation of synthesized aperture radar, a very well known radar to uh, observe the small object on Earth from the sky. And uh, this antenna includes two parts, and uh, this is the half part from the left point of view. And uh, each part has six very large composite plates which are supported uh, with some truss to increase the stiffness of the whole system. This problem has, uh, let me see, has uh, about uh, 1,000 degrees of freedom. And in the old days, if you describe this system with the help of absolute nodal, nodal coordinate formulation, then it, it was not possible for you to do the numeric simulation on any PC. It will need maybe a couple months to do so. However, Based upon the newly proposed approach, especially a great reduction of the computation of nonlinear elastic restoring force, we can do it on a very small PC. And uh, this is the deployment process of the right half of the antenna. And you can see that here the antenna is subject to very large vibration, and uh, this also an ongoing work to attenuate the vibration. Here, some professors used to be engaged in the active control of vibration. I think it's uh, one example. And then the antenna will be deployed to the left part. And also, the left part will subject to a very large os oscillation and needs to be actively controlled later. OK, the first example is relatively easy and uh, because the degrees of freedom is not so large. And the second example looks a little bit long, uh, more complicated. And this is a real example. And China has developed this kind of antenna for telecommunication. This antenna uh, has several, uh, uh, the deployment of this antenna it includes two uh, stages. In the first stage, the two arms, large arm and small arm, will be stretched first, deployed first. And then the centralized hoop truss will be deployed gradually this way. And how we can complete or do the deployment? Because we put a rope in the pipe here. One rope goes this way, and then turn here. You can imagine that if you pull the rope, and then the antenna will be shrinked, will be compacted into this corner. And then if you let the rope go, and then the hoop truss will be gradually deployed. To let the, those bars and truss to be deployed smoothly, and in each joint with a uh, vertical bar, we have a pair of gears and a pair of torsional springs so that the, if you lose the ropes, then the truss will be deployed automatically. And in each, uh, well, uh, let me see. Oh, here, in this kind of joint, here is the joint this way, and this is the other joint. We have the pulley to let the rope can go smoothly. And uh, this is a basic des description of the antenna. And uh, now let me show you the animation of the dynamic response. In the first stage, we let the two arms stretched. And uh, here, the color represents the dynamic stress the red color represents the highest level of the dynamic re response. And uh, this is the, uh, the final stage of the antenna. 
To simplify the visualization, uh, I do not use the deployment of the reflector, the mesh. And here, let me show you how the mesh is deployed. You can all see the change of the colors. That means the change of dynamic stress. And this model includes more than 10,000 degrees of freedom. And it was not possible to do a numerical simulation from the commercial available softwares or the softwares developed in the old days. The third example is also very challenging, the spinning deployment of a solar sail. And uh, some people know that last year, Japanese people launched a space detector. This detector uh, used a very advanced uh, structure to get the energy from the sunlight. And so that the structure should be very large, but very thin with very light weight. And so the structure used the membrane. Membranes. Here, this is the similar structure we, we've done in our lab. And uh, the whole system has six pieces of membranes. And each membranes have uh, many, many degrees of freedom. To let the membranes to be fully deployed, we put six lamped mass, masses at the corner. And then where the spinning speed goes up, and then the centrifugal force will let the structure be deployed. And uh, the most tough problem to analyze or simulate the dynamic net response for this system, you need to look at the wrinkles and slacks and taut stators of each membrane's element during each step of your numerical integration. And uh, to my knowledge, Japanese professor Miyazaki spent a couple months to complete the numerical simulation based upon the commercial available software. And uh, here, are the, here is an example of our numerical simulation. Spent four days on the PC. And here, color also represents the level of the dynamic stress and its change very quickly. Mm. OK. Now let me give you the final example of this talk. This is a space robot which strains first and then grabs somebody, some object, then takes it away. And uh, here is uh, some specific moment of the whole dynamic uh, process. At uh, first, the robotic arms stretch and approach to the object, and then grabs it, and then takes it away. And let me show you the animation of this process. And here, we can see the coupling of the overall motion together with the deformation of the solar panels. Here, the color represents the dynamic stress, the change. When the manipulator just grabs the object, then the dynamic stress will change all of a sudden. Of course, in, most of, uh, in all the cases, the highest level of dynamic stress happen at the clamp ends of the two clamped solar panels. Here, let me show you two specific cases. In the first case, the left case, the manipulator approach to the object. And uh, the manipulator is parallel to the handlebar of the object, but uh, with a small offset. And then it will grasp the handlebar and pull it back. And uh, in the right case, the manipulator approach to the handlebar, but with a small angle. What I mean that they both have a disalignment. And then it will adjust the angle of the object first, and then pull it, and then take it away. And uh, these kind of cases have different influence on the dynamic performance of the sailor panels. And the sailor panels are very sensitive to 
the dynamic performance. And uh, in practice, the vibration of the sea lapels often have troubles. For example, in Shenzhou 8 and Shenzhou 7, and uh, in both these space missions, sea lapels have some troubles, but, not, uh, but have not announced in public. Well, this is the first case. And uh, here you can see, uh, I give you the detailed dynamic information. And uh, if you, uh, the manipulator is parallel to the handlebar, then during the process of grasping, the satellite will be subject to very large motion in Z direction here. Z is yeah, this direction, so up and down. However, the satellite attitude uh, is not very, does not vary very much. And the tracking arrow, of course, uh, show you the difference between the flexible model and the rigid model. And uh, the dynamics of rigid multibody dynamics will be greatly under predict the tracking arrow, gives you wrong result. So in this case, we must use the model of multibody system dynamics. And in the second case, we have the opposite result. And the satellite motion in z direction becomes smaller. However, the change of attitude of satellite will become very large. The tracking arrow have the quite similar properties. OK, that's the four examples I show you. And finally, let me say a few words to conclude this presentation. A first point here that the absolute coordinate based approach, which combines the, say, the absolute nodal coordinate formulation and the natural coordinate formulation to describe the flexible body and the rigid body simultaneously, works very well, which can be used to describe very complicated flexible and rigid coupled dynamic systems, especially for the complicated deployable space structures. Second point here that is very important for us to simplify the computation of elastic force and its Jacobi, or called tangential, tangential stiffness matrix. Together with the parallel computation, you can complete the dynamic process on the PC or on the small workstation to deal with the real engineering problem. The third point that it's very important for us to describe the rotation and the torques in the concept of absolute coordinate so that we can combine these description with the forward, feed forward control or feedback control so that we can complete the control design for those complex structures. Of course, we still have some open problems a lot of open problems which I would like to mention. Especially for the young people here, I hope that you will be interested in these open problems. One important issue that the absolute coordinate formulation does not recollect any components of the deformation. So this is a very accurate description. However, the components of high frequency do not have any use in, from the viewpoint of engineering. Meanwhile, it gives you the multiple time scale problems. If you can field or remove these components of high frequency, then your numerical simulation will become much more efficient. Meanwhile, you do not have to deal with the multiple the time scale problems. You do not need to use very fine time steps. In addition, your numerical scheme must be energy preserving. And uh, nowadays, the energy preserving integration does not work very well. And of course, we need to have some more efficient descriptions for the context in three dimensional space, etc. Anyway, there are a lot of interesting problems left. And I hope young people here will be interested in these problems and make your contributions in future. OK, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, please.
Uh, frankly speaking, uh, we've not done any research from this point of view, and uh, I mentioned that this is a problem-oriented research, and all these examples come from the Academy of Space Industry, and uh, they do not offer us uh, this kind of material. However, actually, we need to describe the damping properly, especially damping from the joint or clearance, etc., uh, which are quite similar to your problem. And uh, we need to put some more important nonlinear factors into the model to be considered in future. Yeah. And uh, from the viewpoint of computation, that's not the most tough problem. And as long as uh, you can offer us the you know, proper constitutive law, etc. Yeah, please. Uh, regarding this uh, SAR antenna mm. problem, right? So I, I don't know what's the like, the requirement, what's the, the any standard, very standard you have to follow so that you can minimize vibration and can serve this uh, function for the computation, right? Because it's a different machine, different vibration standard. I don't know. For uh, unfortunately, I don't know either. <laughs> uh, actually, the Academy of uh, Space Technology, Hang Tian Wu Yuan, I mean, uh, did not offer us any information uh, about this system. However, uh, after our numerical simulation, we told them the vibration is too large. You need to uh, look for this problem in future. And uh, nowadays they think, and uh, of course, uh, the vibration comes from the proper deployment. And uh, most people think that that's not a good way to deploy the antenna this way, so large. And if you deploy it this way, and certainly we do not have very large vibration. So our suggestion is that it's better for the engineers to make a new design to change a new kind of deployment instead of this way. The folding way is not good enough. And they followed some idea from French people. And uh, this way, maybe it's better for them to deploy the truss. If you do not have any truss, it's not necessary for you to deploy the folded place this way. Yeah, you, you have uh, the better deployment is, the, say, the translation. Yeah, yeah. And if we go, go back to uh, the description of nonlinear elastic force, And of course, if your constitutive law is not linear like this, and uh, then your description of the string energy will become more complicated. However, we compute the elastic force step by step in time domain. So e each step, the variation of the elastic force and the constitutive law is very small. So we can linearize your constitutive law together with the relation of your geometry. And if both of them can be linearized in a small, fine step, then the computational work is not very large. But the cumulative yeah. error would be still... Uh, certainly, certainly, uh, certainly, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we <laughs> need to make some trade-off <laughs> between the step length and the cumulation errors. So usually, we prefer to use a longer step 
to reduce the accumulation errors. However, when the time step is too large, sometimes we fail to get the convergent result. Okay, so I'm mm. from yeah, please. Um, and, um, I have a question there. When you calculate the robotic manipulator, um, the flexible property of the, the arm is used to calculate the vibration. Uh, mm -hmm. When you calculate its position, when you want to approach the object, yeah. its position is flexible Sure, sure. Uh, that's also a trade-off problem. And uh, the flexible arms will reduce the vibration caused by the joint. However, it will reduce the accuracy of your position. So in this case, we must have to use control yeah, to make very fine adjustment. Young people. <laughs> yeah, young and uh, people argued a lot about uh, the selection between, say, absolute coordinate formulation or traditionally classical floating frame reference. Frankly speaking, each algorithm or each approach has its own feature and own advantages. So if you, do not ha uh, if you are not so very certain to describe your system properly, especially when the system involves a lot of very soft matters or components, I suggest you to use the absolute coordinate formulation. If you are confident enough, then you can use the classical formulation of floating frame reference, which will be much faster and much more efficient and even easier for you to control the systems. And uh, for example, in the four examples uh, related to space technology I've mentioned here, the first, for the first example, it's not necessary for us to use the absolute node coordinate because it's relatively uh, stiff. However, as for the second one, mm, really required. As for the third one, the solar cell, solar cell uh, it must be used. Different problems needs different kind of approaches. Okay, I have to say stop it here. Uh, because it's a president who, how do you say, fly to Beijing to run out. <laughs> <laughs> so you pause very, very busy. Okay, let's see what time say. Thank you very much again.